AI is taking over everything, but what does that actually mean for end user computing? Is AI going to make virtual desktops smarter? Will it automate device management? Is it going to change the way IT admins work? If you're using Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365 or Intune, you're about to see some major AI driven upgrades that can really transform the way that you manage and experience Windows in the cloud. Microsoft and Nadia are integrating AI deeply into their Azure Virtual Desktop or Windows 365 environments, and here's how. So firstly, we've got auto-scaling optimization. Nadia has released a feature called auto-scaling insights, which will optimize your auto-scaling settings using AI to ensure you're always running the most optimal workloads. It's going to look at what times you're powering your desktops on, what time the users are connecting, what time the users are logging off, what times you're powering the desktops down, that type of thing. And it'll even advise you about what settings you need to change. Very cool. Secondly, we've got help desk activities. We've got a feature called Nadia Copilot, and that's going to assist your level one and level two help desk people to perform activities within the Nadia console. So that's going to make like day-to-day -day administration and troubleshooting a lot easier. And even if you support people, so we'll be able to tell it what problems we're having and it'll tell us like, how do I reset an FHW profile or I'm having this problem, how can I fix it? So we're going to get deeper into that further through the video. And lastly, we've got scripting. So scripting has been around for a while, but not a lot of people actually know how to write partial scripts from scratch, right? Most people just Google it. Nadio has a tool called Nadio Copilot. Um, and that has a feature called Script Pro, and that'll basically write the partial script for you. I can tell it, please write me a partial script to deploy Google Chrome, or please write me a partial script to install Adobe Acrobat, Adobe Acrobat Reader. Um, in today's video, we're basically going to explore those three features. Can AI make your job easier? Because remember, AI is not here to replace us, it's here to assist us. Today, I'm going to be an IT administrator, and we're going to administer a Azure Virtual Desktop or Windows 3. 365 environment and I'm going to pretend I have no knowledge right so I need to deploy some Windows 365 desktops I need to deploy some applications by scripting and automation so I'm going to see how the AI can help us do that the first thing we need to do is deploy all this stuff right all the AI stuff that we're going to go through today is actually built on top of Copilot we need to deploy all that stuff within our environment let's just flick over to the console so we're in here we're in the Nadia console so First place that we go is we go to the settings. So if I just find my mouse, um, we go to settings um, and then integrations. Okay. And you can see down here, we've enabled the auto scale insight recommendations and um, so that deploys some base resources. Um, so if I just click on here and um, you'll be able to see here um, that we basically just enabled the open AI service. So the, um, Auto scale optimizations uses the open AI service. So you can see here we've got just click I and um, that tells you basically we're going to deploy that and that's so good. And then we've got the auto scale recommendations turned on as well. And then we can also do recommendations preloading as well. This basically the recommendations will be loaded once per day. So rather than actively going ahead and doing it, that basically it saves a bit of money as well rather than having to continually this is cheap doesn't use many tokens at all in fact i'm just going to select that because it's my dev environment so i want to save a bit of money and uh, the next thing we're going to do is deploy the the copilot stuff right um so let's go ahead and do that now if i go to integrations let's have a quick look and see so we've got the open ai as your ai so i'm going to look for the copilot functionality so near the environment near the okay pilot so you can see that's disabled right we don't have that enabled so just going to click deploy all right so now we have to go and select which models that we want to deploy and what region they're going to be deployed in you have to worry about these a little bit because some resources aren't available in all regions as you can see here i've got the gpt 3.5 turbo in uk south I've got the GPT-40 in West US and the GPT-40 Mini in West US and then the text embedding in UK South. We have to spread things out a bit. It is supported. Each of these models have different functions and that's why we need to spread them out. I'll put on the screen what those different functions do. A quick overview. So as you can see here, it's saying two open AI resources have been completed. We've got some stuff within UK and some stuff within West US. That's going to deploy those two resources and a text translation service. So a form recognizer, app service, storage account. Nadia is basically going to go ahead and deploy everything for you. And um, so this is all the functions Nerdio need to, to run its own Copilot service. Just to be clear, this is not Microsoft Copilot. This is the Nerdio Copilot customized uh, for Nerdio functionalities. These are the, all, all the resources that it's going to create um, to support that. And you can see you can do some resource tagging um, within there as well. All right, so I can go here and basically say, yep, name, 
So resource type, I'm going to call that the resource type Nidio. So AI stuff. There you go. So if you want to just have a look and see what um, resource it deploys, which we'll do shortly, we can just easily use those tags to to identify that. All right. Let's click that OK button. Fingers crossed that's going to deploy the groups. Microsoft Event Server resource. We need to register the Microsoft Event Hub type. So let's do that now. All right. So we'll be shooting on the fly here, people. Microsoft Event Hub resource provider. So let's open up a tab. I'm going to go to portal. I'm going to go to sometimes if you're deploying a new service and you've not used that service before, you have to register at the resource provider. I'm going to go to settings. Uh, da, 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 resource providers. The one it's complaining about was the Microsoft Event Hub. So let's go and enable that now. Event Hub. There you go. I'm going to select that and then register that. Take that. Click register. So that's going to go and register that for me. So I'm going to give you a an example of why men should read the manual. I actually check the documentation and. It tells me what resource providers I need to register. So I'm just going to go away and register all these resource providers. When I'm done, I'll be back and then we can continue with the deployment. See you shortly. Okay, so I'm back. As you can see, we've now registered all those resource providers that we need to register. We're going to go and try it again. Just going to go back to here, press the OK button. Hopefully, fingers crossed this time it's going to deploy. Okay. So that's gone ahead and that'll deploy. So that's going to take a few minutes to, to deploy. We'll be back shortly when that's finished deploying. Um, and hopefully we'll have a, a Nidio Copilot. All right, see you shortly. Okay, and we are not done. So we just head over to the console because the job actually timed out. Sometimes that happens. You can see here, it took around half an hour to deploy. Let's just take a quick look at the resources that which have been deployed. It's created all the app service storage accounts, the event hub stuff, the application, the SQL service, all of these things which Nerdio has deployed for you. We can see all the applica application insights, the bot service. You don't need to do anything. It'll just go ahead um, and just deploy um, all those resources. Okay, all right, so now that it's deployed, let's just have a quick look. You can see all the deployments, all the resources which have been deployed. We don't have any options here to disable. If you don't want to use the resources, you can disable that afterwards. All right. After deploying it, this is the Copilot icon, which you can see in the top right corner. So I'm just going to click on that. And this is the basically generative AI model, which you use to, to interact with Copilot. So let's go and have a quick think about what can we use it for, right? What can we do with it? So the first use case with the Nerdio Copilot is actually around help desk functionality, right? So we can ask it to do stuff. So we'll give that a minute and um, it's loading up for the first time. When that's loaded, I'll be back and we'll ask some basic questions like how do we create an image? How do we set up a host for those type of things and then see what it gives us. All right, let's go and see what we can do. So I've just gone and typed help here. So see what I can do. Translate information with help center KBs. So that means basically all the Nerdio knowledge based articles, it's basically pulled them in. So that's very cool and translate, reset history, and generate scripted actions. So let's have a play around with this, shall we? Let's think of some examples. Please, can you tell me how to create a host pool? Okay, so it's hopefully gonna tell me in detail how I create a host pool within the Nerdio console. To create a host pool, follow these steps. It tells you exactly what to do and then we can also click out in there as well and it'll bring this up to show me actually how to do that so very cool and um, tells you like the different types of face balls and all that stuff so um extremely useful for those for those people who don't really know anything um about nerdio maybe we want to configure fs logics how do i configure fs logics for my host pool okay it's going to retrieve all the KB information that I need to configure and navigate to list of host pools, select properties, toggle, use FH logic profiles to on, select an existing profile or create a new one. So click some save stations and again, it's going to show me how to, to do all that stuff. So very cool, very useful. Let's try giving it something else now. What can we ask it? How do I back up my Intune policies, for example? Okay. 
So now we're going to give you a bit more different, see how clever the engine really is. In change, select time, automatic policy, enable for backup. So yeah, there you go. It's got this bang on right. And then again, we can go to stations. Yeah, create a backup for this FIFA policy. So again, just really easy, right? Rather than having to click around in the console and try and figure stuff out, it's actually going to show you how to do that stuff. It's extremely useful. Let's try asking it a general question. Can you tell me what FS Logics Cloud Cache is? Okay, so this is generative AI where we're interacting with it, asking it questions, for example. There you go, it's got that bang on the FS Logics Cloud Cache feature, specified for storage locations. Okay, good. And then again, if we click on the citations, it will come back and give us more information on that as well. As you can imagine, for your first line help desk people, this is really useful, right? So imagine if I'm a first line help desk person and I want to log a user off. How do I do that? How do I log a user off their AVD desktop session? Okay. That's going to come back and tell me how to log a session off. Navigate to workspaces, locate the type workspace, the user sessions, and log off. There you go. Easy peasy. Very cool. So, this is where we're actively searching through our KV articles and allowing you to interact and bring back information. Very helpful. Can save you a ton of time and effort. I mean, rather than having to log support tickets or read through the documentation or reach out to your colleagues, you can literally just jump in here and start to ask how to do stuff. It's very useful. All right, next we'll explore something called Script Pro. The Script Pro is the ability to write scripts, right? We'll go through this scenario of the point of host ball, need to install some applications. How do we do that? All right, so let's do that next. I'm just going to go into here and I'm basically going to say, okay, please write me a script to install adobe acrobat reader and make sure it's the latest version searching for scripts basically it searches for our existing knowledge base scripts if it sees the scripts that we've already got they'll go ahead and reuse that but it hasn't found one we're going to create that script and validate it and then hopefully pump it out to me extremely useful how cool is that? Let's have a quick look through the script and see what it's given us. It's got a description for better handling the script. Define log folder and path. Good, so it's going to output the log file for us. Function write log. Starting installation. Define. Okay, so it's automatically connecting to Adobe to download that script. So it's downloading the latest version. I download an Adobe Reader. Installing it. So start installation. Start process file path. Okay, this is good. So automatically selected quiet which is really useful okay so it's gonna get item property so it's checking the latest version okay it's good and it's gonna clean it up it's really cool it should make your uh, software deployment by automation a lot easier um, because he's basically gonna go write the scripts for it all right so um, we've gone through how to use Nadia Copilot to troubleshoot issues and um, we've gone through how to use Nadia Copilot to deploy software and now let's look at the auto scaling optimization. Um, this is very cool. Um, so this will analyze your auto scale configuration and then the actual usage of the host pool and then tell you what settings just changed. So let's get into that now. All right, this is the auto scaling screen. We've got two things. The first one is something called auto scale insights. So what this is doing, this is looking at your actual sessions, um, right? So this will give you like a, a sort of red, amber, green scenario and see how optimized our host pool is. But what we've built on top of that is a pop-up called auto scale in insight recommendations this is the ai bit um, and what it's actually doing is that going back and saying these are the settings which you want to be changing so it looks at the usage now this is my dev environment so there's not much data but we can go in here and it'll look and see what the usage is of the host ball and then if you're under provisioning, if you're over provisioning, it'll come back and make some recommendations. So this is probably not 100% accurate because there's lots of missing data, but you're basically saying, look, for early morning observation, so from 7.30 to 8 a.m., we're optimal. So we minor user demand and capacity adjustments because our dev environment, right? At 10 a.m., the capacity is decreased by one host. Because of that, we recommend you set a pre stay schedule to 7.30 a.m. Uh, and one to 8.30 a.m. and scale the resources down at 10 a.m. So it'll actually recommend, hey, the, these are the settings that you need to change or maybe these settings are optimal as well. In a production environment, I'll try and put a screenshot on the screen showing you what a real production environment looks like. But you can imagine this is extremely useful, right? Uh, rather than 
having someone like me who has to go into your environment and work out what setting to change is just going to tell you. So in the future, we're actually hopefully going to automate all that stuff as well. So at the moment, we're just recommending, but the plan is in the future for it to actually give you an option to change those settings as well. So it'll continually monitor uh, the environment and optimize the settings. Very cool. I use it a lot with my customers. All right. So there you go. That's three things that you can do with AI um, to help manage your, your Azure Virtual Desktop environment. You can do Windows 365 as well. Within the sort of knowledge base articles, we have a lot of stuff around Windows 365, so we could ask it to do stuff. There's a lot more to come. We've got a lot of announcements coming um, our Nerdiocon conference, um, which is in April. But yeah, just to recap, we've managed to use AI to ask it questions and um, to say, okay, how do I do these things? We retrieve, retrieve KB articles and stuff. So useful for level one, level two help desk people or people who don't know Nerdia. We've used it to write scripts or go and write scripts so we can install software onto our images or session host. So that can save you a ton of time rather than having to do stuff manually. And um, we can just write a script to do it. And then lastly, we just gone in and looked at our auto scale um, recommendations to say, okay, how can Nerdy continue to monitor your auto scaling uh, to make sure you're always as optimal? So, yeah, that's it from me this week. I just wanted to share that because I think it's three things we're using AI every day. AI is going to only get better. We're going to see more and more functionality to seep into the product and leverage Azure Copilot services and different services as well. Uh, so, yeah, exciting stuff. Very exciting times. Things seem to be accelerating at a phenomenal pace. So, it's a very exciting industry to be working in at the moment. That's it from this week. I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, please can subscribe. The more people do that, the more it inspires me and the more content I can produce. Please put a comment below if you use AI within your environment or what you're looking forward to the most. Made a video midweek. If not, I will see you next week. Thanks. Goodbye. <laughs>